Okay, so we've been talking a little bit about, and it's been a theme over a um, couple of months now about success and how to maintain success in um, particularly within moving, you know, a business forward, uh, improving the maturity of continuous improvement, all those kind of things. But I just wanted to sort of touch to kick this off on a, a little thing that you've said many times, Chris, which is when's the best time to plant a tree is right now, or it would have been yesterday. Um, is always the best time to plant a tree, not tomorrow. It's right now. And my example recently was a company that, I'd done some work for um, last year and they come back around to do another six months of um, work improving their um, lean journey in particular. And I was really impressed by what they did. They planted the tree right now. So we had our initial um, discussion about what they wanted to achieve over the next six months. And I expected them to say off the back of that discussion, let's catch up for planning in January. But they actually said to me, let's catch up for planning this week. And that was perfect. So they were they are planning the tree right now. They want to get their planning sorted out before they go on the Christmas break so that when January comes, they can hit the ground running. It sort of speaks to the, let's call it the artificiality of can calendars. You know. um, is December the right time of year for me to reflect and then repent, and then uh, readjust. You know, the plan, do, check, adjust cycle with a few more emotive terms, or should mm -hmm. we be doing it all the time? And you know, let, let's uh, let's take the tailwind where we can get it. If people are reflecting and repenting now, um, that's better than not doing it at all. So, old mate David Allen with his um, book, Getting Things Done. Uh, talks about those different perspectives and this time of year we're seeing people at that 30,000 feet perspective for a change looking down on the business and you no know, regretting some of the things they haven't done and all going well celebrating a few of the things that they did do that went well mm. now you know David Allen talks about the, the lower levels and you get down to the level of well what am I doing right now Mm -hmm. hopefully planting a tree as climate change needs it mm. but you know fortnightly report sort of sits in that middle layer as pulling together 10 working days for most people and being able to reflect on that longer horizon you stack together three or four fortnightly reports three being the magic number usually and you can get a view of how you're going but you do need to have that 30,000 foot view of well you know, what am I going to do? What's mm. the business going to look like in three or six or 12 or five years' time? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I believe we've talked about monkeys before. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked about gorillas yet, have we? So we've talked about the monkey on your back or avoiding getting monkeys on your back from your team by making sure you delegate authority. So tell us about gorillas. So um, old mate Covey back a, a few years ago talked about, well, you know, you've successfully got the monkeys off your back. So what are you doing with your time? And he talks about the strategic gorilla that you need to uh, make time for those strategic changes of the business. Yeah. So, you know, the monkeys are on the right back, the person who has the authority, the skill and the capability to deal with the monkey, which is generally not you as a leader. Uh, the gorilla is thinking about that uh, rule of threes, three months, six months, 12 months, five years, which pretty much maps to six fortnights, 12 fortnights or 24 fortnights, if you think about those three, six, 12 months periods. And, you know, thinking about things three times a year actually makes you usually 50% better than your peer group because most mm. people do a mid-year review and an end-of-year review. This at is true. At least you're doing three. So you've mm. uh, done 50% better than most businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good point. I, I, I find, you know, I'm very much, I guess we're, you know, as a consultancy, we're only a very small business. Um uh, work ebbs and flows and things like that but one of the things that I probably 
don't do enough of is actually addressing the gorilla and and looking at those reviews because quite often you know as a small group we can kind of know we're heading in the right direction but it's important like my my opportunity to actually address the gorilla in the room so to speak is actually around this time of the year I'm starting to think about my reviewing my business plan and and setting in motion some of the things I know um, or new things I've discovered or adjustments I want to make to you know um, what we offer to clients Um, but one of the things I did and not even consciously was in the in the second um, in the second quarter of this year, I actually did do a review. It was mainly in my head, and it was through getting a lot of feedback from clients. And I did that around um, after the first quarter of the financial year had finished. Um, I got a, I got quite a lot of feedback from clients, and it helped me to adjust what I'm going to be doing in the in the new calendar year. But um, I think to do this more deliberately, more often, is very, very important. And, you know, Six Sigma talks about rituals. So if we can ritualise it and make it standardised work for us as leaders, we can become more effective leaders. The monkey is that discretionary time that uh, can get sucked up sometimes because you want to feel like you're doing something concrete. Mm. Uh, That gorilla is... Um, setting the the pathway of the business you know are we going to double revenue by the end of next year okay if that's what we're going to do what does that look like what's the Mm. pathway for us to get there we need to add these services remove these services uh, pivot slightly towards here slightly away from here here are the risks and critical issues the recipe any uh, business leader can rattle that off the critical issue is who does it and who doesn't? Yeah. I, I think just on that subject, and I think to probably referencing a little bit of Six Sigma as well, as we talk about in Six Sigma, we talk about what are our Ys or our outcomes and what are the Xs or the inputs that create our outcomes. So if doubling your revenue is one of your Ys. What are the Xs you put in? And one of the Xs I think that needs to be in everybody's, you know, discussion with the gorilla in the room um, is that, uh, you need to you need to touch base with your customers. You need your voice of customer, which is a big thing in Six Sigma, and it's actually um, not so clearly spelled out. But it's a big deal in continuous improvement as well as understanding the voice of customer. And I think it underpins all um, lean and continuous improvement effort. Is is that we're supposed to be value, creating value for our customers, regardless of what industry we're in. So for me every quarter or three times a year at least, I should be touching base with my customers and asking them what is and isn't working for them to help me better adjust and improve and refine what we're providing for them. And I I don't think there's, you know, maybe if you're mining a commodity, it's not such um, such a discussion. However, internally, I don't know, Really, you're giving me the eyebrow there. So uh, let's touch on one of your miners who may have put out their financial results yesterday. Yep. And uh, they talked about the ever-increasing margin between the price that the market has for midpoint quality iron ore product and the price of their lesser quality iron ore product and how it's getting bigger. Yep. And, you know, the voice of the customers were saying, you know, let's, uh, let's get more of this higher purity gear if we can because we use less coking coal and thermal coal to turn it into steel than we do with this uh, lesser product down this end where I need to get more thermal coal and coking coal and my government doesn't like me emitting carbon into the atmosphere mate. Gotcha yeah that makes a lot of sense actually so you can there you go so you've proved it to me straight away like voice of customer is even important if you were doing if you're mining a commodity um i I was thinking uh for you know the uh the average leader in a in a massive business like that mines iron ore um sure they're not going to be having the discussion or listening to the voice of customer about you know what the um 
steel mill actually wants that might not be their role, but there's plenty of customers in their value stream um, upstream and down, oh, sorry, downstream from them who they can listen to. And I mean, how many times has, uh, you know, the superintendent of a processing plant gone and had a chat with uh, the train loadout and, and the train operators or the, or the team that are in charge of the trains? I would say it would be the 50% of them that have train loadout report to them. And yeah. The 50% who don't have train loadout report to them don't have that conversation. Probably, probably something like that, you know, and it, at the end of the day, you know, there's so many people you can have a positive impact on if you listen to them and it needs to be part of your strategy. It needs to be, you know, make, you need to make time for the gorilla and it needs to include, you know, well and truly a, um, an opportunity to gather voice a customer and make sure that you're listening to that. And, you know, to make what sounds to some punters quite simple, plan, do, check, adjust, uh, we're saying that you should really do check. Yeah. Should be checking regularly, right? Otherwise, your plan, do, adjust. And what are you adjusting for? Uh, you're adjusting for your own, the thoughts coming out of your own head. And I've seen that before, actually. I've seen people... So particularly in one industry where they were manufacturing and, you know, you usually only hear from your customer if something goes wrong. I think most people are probably like that too. They don't always hear, you know, about the 80% of times that things went right and the customer's satisfied. They only hear when something goes wrong and they, they base all their strategies around that. And in reality, you know, if that's how you um, work, you, you basically pretty quickly get into a plan, do, adjust. Um, because you stop checking because you go, there was that one time I had a really painful conversation with the client and I never want to have that happen again. Um, but the reality of when you do plan, do check and adjust is that check, if you're doing it on a regular basis, it's actually an overwhelmingly pleasant surprise and a pleasant experience because you get to be really honest. They have an opportunity to be honest um, and you do get quite a lot of positive reinforcement of it, what you're doing as well. Yes. And uh, on a more practical sense, if you remove the check, then you probably don't need to adjust. You just need to plan right. So yeah. You turn into a plan do uh, duality rather than the plan do check adjust. Now, good news. Mr. Shewitt came up with that in the 1930s and it really hasn't changed since. So I'm guessing we probably got it about right. Yeah. You know what? It's a, it's a timeless um, approach to quality and um, nothing really fundamentally changes in that approach. We still have trouble doing it today, which says that very much it's a, you know, our, our human nature or the nature of our society um, is, is such that we will constantly have to use plan, do, check, adjust to, you know, improve all the time. We're never going to get away from needing that approach. So, you know, pivoting back to where you started with the when's the best time to plant a tree 20 years ago, when's the second best time yesterday, when's the third best time. As soon as I've finished this conversation with you, I actually do have four uh, kanukas to plant, believe it or not, get the bees in. <laughs> Uh, all of this ritual stuff requires you to take the monkey off your back to buy yourself the time to think about the gorilla. What do I want the business to look like? Where's the input from the team? Because you know they've got great perspectives of where the check and adjust may be malfunctioning in the business. Yep. It yep. may take a few iterations to get out of the you need to cycle of the what do you need to do you, you need to hire another 15 people well is there a different idea because hiring 15 people is going to take bloody ages mate yeah always even at the best of times no it's acknowledging the input of your customers acknowledging the input of the, the team even going to the boss or the banker and acknowledging their input too we want to see more revenue mate it's mm. probably what's going to come out of their mouth, less injuries, more revenue, mm -hmm. less capital, 
Yep. It's what my accountant keeps saying. Yep. <laughs> but, you know, you, you know what the recipe is. This stuff has been around for ages. Uh, what we can do to help business leaders is turn it into a ritual instead of a shortcoming. Yes, absolutely. Good point. Well said. <laughs>